folks, Scott Sager with you here again today in the RTC TV4 studios. Today we have former and current contender for Rochester Mayor, Mark Smiley. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Scott. So you uh, thrown your hat back into the ring here. Uh, you were mayor of Rochester for four years, two years, six years. What was it? I was mayor for uh, two terms, eight years, two actually. Terms. Eight yeah. years. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Yeah. We've gotten older since then, haven't we? And wiser. And wiser. I like that. Well, very good. Well, uh, as you folks know, we bring the uh, candidates in here so that you get a little bit of exposure to them. Not a hard, grilling interview by any means. Just a conversation about their interest and what they think they can do to help serve uh, this community so you've been uh, you've got some experience there in serving for eight years there in Rochester what uh, maybe brought about the idea to come back and do her again well Scott the uh, whole thing is that uh, I really enjoyed being the mayor yeah um, it's my cup of tea and a way to speak because in my business background I was a contractor and mm -hmm. everything so Dealing with the water and the sewer and the street repair and stuff like that. That was what I did for most right. of my life of being involved in that. Yep. And the big thing is like the uh, sewer system out on Lake Manitou mm -hmm. that I was the inspector when we put that in back in the oh, late no 80s. Oh, no kidding. I didn't yeah, realize late that. 80s, yeah. I actually worked for Burt Mechanical and Airvac at that okay. time. Nice. And so not only was I able to uh, do the work, I could put the pipe in the ground and everything, but I was overseeing, make sure they put it into the specifications to sure. Airbacks design and everything. So, so the infrastructure, you had some hands-on experience that right. really paid off for you as you became mayor. Right. Excellent. And then uh, with the wastewater department, that was uh, right up my alley as yeah. far as being able to work with uh, our, our department heads at that time. and. Yeah. So uh, back in that time, we actually were uh, in violation, if you recall. I do. And we spent uh, probably about a, over a million and some dollars in cash to bring that treatment plant back up to standards for the Indiana Department of Environmental Management. Gotcha. And that had been, that is something you inherited that way. Correct? I did inherit that okay. when I first, that was like the first couple uh, months into my uh, <laughs> mayor um Probably yeah, kind of an job, auspicious you know? start right there yeah, from the beginning. But, exactly. Uh, yeah, when uh, I came to uh, be the mayor, you know, I, I'd always been in business myself, too. Mm -hmm. That uh, I did go to college and become a um, college graduate at Indiana State. Nice. So I had a four-year degree in business administration. So when I came back here, that I started my own business, too. Uh -huh. And uh, that was Smiley Construction and uh, Smiley Rental Properties. Nice. And I also had a realtor license as well. Oh, I didn't know that. And uh, my father, he was uh, in insurance and uh, real estate, Ray Smiley. So he's the one that kind of steered me into going into the construction business yeah. because he always dabbled in construction as well. Oh, that's great. And after the tornado back in 1974, yeah. I, I'd framed my first house when I was 17. Oh, no kidding. So that was my aunt's house. It was uh, Terry and Larry Howdy Shell uh -huh. at the time that uh, the tornado blew those houses down yes, out on 200 did. North. Mm -hmm. So I, my dad uh, basically talked me into going to college. So I was the last grandchild to go to college. Okay. So um, I kind of had to on my mom's side because there was eight of us. So <laughs> I was the last one. I had to get to college. <laughs> had to degree. do it. Yeah. And uh, so then when I came back, I was always planning on going into the insurance business, but he had steered me to go into my own construction company. Gotcha. So it was very successful and a lot of work. I've always worked hard and being in business for yourself, you learn the value of the dollar. Yeah. You know, um, there's a lot of uh, difference when you, uh, you know, corporate America's good, but when it's your dollar, mm -hmm. you, you can kind of be more or less frugal about it, you I know? I understand. And so that's one thing that uh, I learned with uh, being the mayor and uh, working around other mayors, because mm -hmm. I was big into networking with all the other mayors in the state of Indiana as well. And for a year and a half, I was the president of the Indiana Conference of Mayors. I didn't know that. So there's 120 mayors back then. I think there's 121 now because uh, they had another city since okay. then. But uh, so that was a, a good learning curve. And uh, by working with the other mayors, you're able to um, use their ideas. Maybe mm -hmm. it doesn't work here, but right. you find out what works and doesn't work. Yeah. So that's very uh, good in that way that yeah. you can take and, you know, not have to... Uh, Networking and sharing of ideas. And yeah. Maybe they've found out that this was tried and didn't work for them. So you kind of tweak it to what works for you and put it over exactly. here. Exactly. And then uh, if you do have a question, you could kind of bounce it off of somebody else sure. that's already been there. You yeah. Know? So you don't have to be the pioneer on everything. But you use your own common sense and business sense as well. Sure. And the big thing that I brought to the uh, 
city of Rochester, I brought my can contracting experience in with the uh, being the mayor for, it was just like a contracting job. I worked for Burton Mechanicals too, so they always had a superintendent overseeing all the projects. Right. So that way, that superintendent would uh, basically bring it back to the boss, and uh, that time it was Bryce Burton. And uh -huh. So he would, uh, you know, contact one person, and that superintendent would oversee all the projects. There might be ten projects in the state of Indiana. Right. So I brought that approach into the city of Rochester okay. with an operation manager. So I moved the city uh, water, uh, sewer, and street department kind of all in one unit, even though they were different divisions, mm -hmm. but I had one person kind of overseeing everybody, mm -hmm. and then that way we all worked together, mm -hmm. and when somebody retired, you wouldn't necessarily necessarily have to rehire somebody, mm -hmm. because through natural attrition, you mm -hmm. can cut costs. Absolutely. And we cut a lot of costs out, and uh, the eight years I was the mayor, we cut about a million dollars out of expenses no for kidding. a small city this size. Wow. And that is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But we could put that million dollars into infrastructure, such as asphalt for streets. Yep. We used to put about $400,000 in the street repair and everything like that. So you don't really cut anybody's job, but mm -hmm. when people retire, you have to use that strategy more with less. Yep. Spread the and, workload over the existing force. Right. Mm -hmm. And utilize your resources. And by doing that, you know, that made opened up av other avenues to buy more equipment. Right. And we bought a lot of equipment back in the, when I was a mayor. We experienced uh, buying, uh, you know, front-end loaders. And then we uh, we did change the whole snow removal system in the city, too. And that okay. was uh, also from my experience of pushing a lot of snow and uh, smiley construction. Right. So we upgraded all the trucks into small one-ton trucks versus those big two-ton trucks. Right. And we made them four-wheel drive to push the snow. And we put snow blades on all those trucks. Interesting. And then uh, Just downtown, trying to be efficient with yeah. these things, right? And Based that on saves your experience. Money. <laughs> that saves money. And uh, most mayors don't have that experience mm -hmm. of hands-on, as mm -hmm. I call it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's uh, I met one other uh, mayor in Tell City who had been retired. He was an excavator contractor as well. Okay. But uh, so that you know that you know the nuts and bolts of how everything sure. works, and not only that, it helps uh, when you're doing bidding jobs and stuff. You can relate with the uh, engineers because yep. you can speak their language, yep. and that's one thing. When I did work for Airvac, I went around promoting in the United States the uh, technology of Airvac. Nice. I did that after the Japanese had bought uh, um, Airvac out from mm -hmm. Burton Mechanical. They right. took it over. And so that, uh, when I was with uh, Burton Mechanical as a foreman and stuff, and doing sewer work and stuff like that, overseeing it in the prisons and the high schools, that I went in with AirVac after inspection of the sewer around the lake yeah. and uh, promoted it. And I did that nice. for about nine years nice. and worked with the uh, municipalities in different states and the, uh, the uh, like Indiana Department of Environmental Management. Mm -hmm. Each state has one of those, so I have to go speak to them right. and also the EPA. So this was nationwide. You were out doing this on behalf of AirVac, talking about the technologies you had implemented here in Rochester. Right. Interesting. And uh, trying to sell the concept. Yeah. And then we moved an office in Florida, but I got to live here and Florida. Okay. And at the same time, I still kept my business here as far as the rental property. <laughs> Busy man, like weren't that. you? Yeah. <laughs> and um, so it was a great experience. And by the time when I did decide to run for mayor, all that kind of fit together. It makes sense. And um, talking with the engineering firms and uh, different businesses and the, the uh, Department of uh, Environmental Management. Mm-hmm. You know, it was right up my alley because yeah. I'd been doing that, and already, so already knew the contacts, yeah. already knew the lingo, right? Excellent. So that that helped a lot, and then also uh, just uh, running the, as a business, mm -hmm. you know, because as when you work for yourself, you know, my dad always told me you didn't have any money until you paid all your bills. Yes, and so if you have a budget, you know, I, I hear this in a lot of cities that, well, we have it in the budget, we can spend it. Well, yeah. and that's true to a point, but if you spend that money. You never build up your kitty and your reserves right. like we have a rainy day fund here. So mm -hmm. you can put that money into a rainy day fund and keep it for something more, um, you know, maybe that it's all important. But if you have uh, more asphalt or right. just like the parking lot downtown, that was that's all budgeted years in advance. Right. And that way you have the money reserves. Nice. And it's something like we did with uh, Chief Butler. He's the uh, fire chief. We started a uh, truck rotation nice. account. So instead of putting that money back into the general fund mm -hmm. where it can get lost, mm -hmm. <laughs> we would put it into a fund that was specifically for trucks. Right. right. So the allocation won't go to some other urgent need. You've already you've got it dedicated over here, and it's just earning interest and making money. Right. Excellent. It gets lost in the shuffle. It does. And then. 
when we were uh, in my past administration, we paid off bonds. Yeah. And we did that, and by doing that, it makes your credit look good as yes. well. And then when you rebond, it helps you get a cheaper rate. Yes. And by paying off the wastewater bond early, we mm -hmm. did that. And then we also paid off the water bond mm -hmm. early. But we, in turn, rebonded because we built the water tower out on 18th Street. Yes. And we also upgraded the uh, water plant that was ancient in uh, pipes and yeah, valves and right. the telemetry and everything in there. Now it can be done remotely from wherever you're at. Nice. You know? So we not only refurbished, but we also upgraded. Upgraded. Nice. And then also we worked on, which uh, we finished on, uh, as a water department you're talking about, we uh, put all remote readers in. Oh, no kidding. And by doing that, you... Uh, it used to be three guys would be four days going yeah, around reading going all around the water meters. meters physically. Yeah. We put remotes in there. Now one guy can do it one or two hours for the whole city. No kidding. Does he drive around in a vehicle and he it just, just comes in? Yes. No kidding. Yes. And uh, by doing that, we were able to reduce sure. employees because we had it more automated. Right. And uh, since I've been gone, there's been a lot of employees hired back. I see. And, uh, you know, so when you, you work eight years, you, you, you know, everybody has their own management. Sure. You know, and you can't say it's good or bad, but I, I know with Mark Smiley's management, we were able to save a lot of money. Yeah. And we could put it into different resources and assets. Interesting. So you built the efficiencies up and uh, you really leveraged those efficiencies to do more things. Right. Very interesting. It's kind of like in the same business, you know, uh, in my own world, because you do that and, you know, you yeah. refinance or, right. you know, you use your equity to build your, you know, what you're having and, uh, as your business. And it's the same thing. You, you can buy more tools if right. you uh, save money one way yeah. and to upgrade your equipment or, um, you know, not necessarily. Sometimes you need uh, more employees, but do you hire a full-time employee or do you uh, use a part-time employee? You know, right. once you hire a full-time employee... You just don't get rid of them. Right. And especially with the city, because uh, the city doesn't pay unemployment taxes like you do in your uh, personal business. Didn't know that. And, but if you lay somebody off, the city has to pay the full unemployment. Oh, I see. That's the catch. I see. So it saves the city by not having to pay those federal unemployment taxes. Yeah. But once you hire somebody, it's hard to get rid of them because you're going to have to pay them whether they're there or not. Right. No. Until uh, they run off of unemployment. Right. No, a really good point there. And automation will solve for that. Here at RTCTV4, we're working on that. Um, you know, we're putting some cameras out there in right. various places where they're going to be fixed cameras, mm -hmm. meaning I don't have to send a crew two hours right. early to do all the right. setup sit there and run the entire operation, we can automate that to mm -hmm. a certain degree. And that efficiency, uh, as you were saying, you kind of parlay that into other things. We do the same here. Right. I can't have a crew there. I don't need a crew there. So now I can send a crew over here. So efficiencies make a lot of sense in business. Right. And that's the other thing that you brought up, up the cameras. Mm -hmm. um, I used to be involved with the mayors, and I went to a lot of the roundtable meetings that uh, we would communicate and you learn, yep. you know, you're, I'm a big, um, uh, proponent of learning. Yes. You know, I don't, I don't know everything, right. but you know, I have a lot of common sense. I, my one uncle I used to work with always said, common sense will tell you that, you know, <laughs> well now I say that too, you know, yeah. but the, the thing of it is the cameras, um, being around uh, the police department was an eye opener for me becoming the mayor because the mayor is involved in over the police department right. with his board. So I have a lot of respect for uh, the police, mm -hmm. and you know now that I know how it operates a lot more. Uh -huh. And the thing about it, you know, you used to be as you're the mayor, people would come up to you and say, "Well, I got arrested, but I didn't do this." Oh, right. You know, well, we I didn't, didn't realize you got those calls. But... Well, yeah, or if you're out in public, you I know. Gotcha. And so we were the first city in Indiana to get those body cameras. No kidding. Because I thought, and uh, at the time it was Chief Miller. And I says, let's get these body cameras mm -hmm. because that way, when people tell their story, we can play it right back to them. Absolutely. So we were already on our second generation of cameras wow. in my administration when now everybody's going that way yeah. because it's such a, um, it's an investment because of the liability of lawsuits. Yep. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's, it's making sure that justice is served um, right. and that the truth is really out there. And uh, they're, they're an important part of society here in America yep. for sure now. So, but I didn't realize that we were the first you in, Indiana, in Indiana yeah. to with do that. With the mayors that I was involved with. That's and, fantastic. Um, you know, I knew, you know, 90 some mayors out of right. 120 that was around. Well, and again, that's, that's just another yeah. asset that helps um, the entire situation, the right. entire system along the way. And um, it keeps the liability low on your officers. They know that they're being right. reported. Therefore, mm -hmm. 
Um, they're going to behave in such a way that um, you would want them to behave, yeah. if you will. And but it protects it, the uh, policeman as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's very good. Uh, I hadn't and, realized that. And that kind of goes back to, I was in insurance business as well. I yes. don't know if you knew that or not, but uh, after my father passed away, uh, Ray Smiley, that uh, I took over his... Uh, the uh, Rochester Farmers Mutual Insurance okay. Company. So I ran out for about 20 years no and kidding. was involved in, uh, I was the uh, basically the secretary treasurer manager of the company. Okay. And we had like a hundred million dollars worth of insurance in force. Wow. So it was uh, different counties and everything. We've been here since one year longer than the uh, telephone company, actually. No kidding. Yeah. It, it was started like, clear uh, back there in the 1890s, yeah. huh? But uh, unfortunately, it's like all other businesses that uh, we end up merging it with another company sure. because uh, the insurance uh, business, you know, the farmers have gotten smaller mm -hmm. and uh, fewer. Yeah. So now they're mega farmers. Yeah. And back you know, 100 years ago, everybody had a tractor absolutely, uh, some cattle or absolutely. livestock. So that's uh, that's the thing of the past. And unfortunately, that Rochester Farmers, uh, there is no more Rochester Farmers. It went to another company in, right. uh, well, uh, in I, Indianapolis. Again, with evolution comes, um, you know, the efficiencies uh, right. are built into those type of things. Things, and it's more efficient and more cost effective to do it as a larger organization. So yeah. interesting experience, though, and what that, you know, the insight that that gives you into the liabilities and the potentials. Right. Um, so uh, so that helps, piece. too, when we yeah. uh, would go with the health insurance and all that. You mm -hmm. know, that was one of my majors in college as well, okay. insurance, real estate, and uh, business nice. and marketing. So, uh, you know, it all fit together. Yeah. And uh, I do have a diversified background. Sure. And uh, that's kind of uh, invaluable to uh, other mayors because Absolutely. not too many mayors have my type of background. Interesting. Well, you've got a business acumen for sure, and that's going to put you in a position where you can understand, um, you know, how organizations operate logistically, how, um, you know, systematically things have to be done. Uh, I, I liked where you were going with the efficiencies. Um, I think it's very important to be as efficient as we can. Right. Um, you know, it's not saying that we don't need people anymore, mm -hmm. of course. It's just a matter of if you can, time. Time is the, the biggest component that exactly. we don't have enough of. So if you can shore or free up one of your employees' times by putting something automatic in place or changing something just a little bit, that, that's a wonderful idea. And uh, you practiced that during your eight years as mayor, correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, the other thing that I want to point out, that recycling. Yeah. I'm really uh, saddened that the uh, recycling program was taken away. Okay. Um, I will bring back recycling okay. to the citywide uh, part of your recycling. Platform That'll for... be my platform. Okay. And um, there's no reason that it shouldn't have been uh, still in existence. Mm -hmm. We had it uh, gone, and we will have it gone again okay. if, when I'm elected mayor elected in 2020. Mayor. Okay. So the other thing that uh, I used to be big with with the uh, community uh, correctional foundations, we mm -hmm. used to use community service. Yeah, and we used a lot of that. And that's free labor. Yeah, you know, so that that helps. And we're not the using department. it now. I don't believe we're using too much of it, from okay. what I'm understanding. Okay. And the other thing uh, with my administration, I had everybody working together, mm -hmm. and uh, they call it silos with the uh, street department, water department, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, wastewater department. You know, you got these three silos in those right. departments. Well, you tear those silos down, you all work together, mm -hmm. and it keeps the morale up. Absolutely. And uh, you don't want a morbid morale with your city right. employees. So it gets I feel you some buy-in. It's not a we right. they. It's an us. Right. And the same thing with the team of uh, Fulton County. Mm -hmm. I work well with the commissioners. Okay. I work well with the county council. Great. Um, when my administration, I would meet with the commissioners, uh, Mark Rodriguez and Roger Rose, uh -huh. and we would all get together. And you know, it's uh, too small of a county mm -hmm. to be, you know, separated. Yep. So you you have to you know have your team work together. And there's a lot of things that uh, you can save money by working together okay and it's not me or you it's right. us right and that's fulton county absolutely and rochester is the, the seat of course from fulton right. county but it we're still all one uh team yeah it's like one big family yeah well very interesting how you're trying to bring everybody together there mark um now you you married have children here i do jane was a former first lady right uh, yeah well yes, and, yes uh, she, maybe again <laughs> we hope so yeah and uh she's from indianapolis okay. and we've been together Soon be 25 years of marriage. We've been together, you know, we've known each other longer than that, about yeah. 33, but uh, we have uh, we have five children between us, yeah. and unfortunately, I lost one of my daughters, but uh, you know, that's part of life that you know. But uh, I do have uh, one daughter that lives in Israel, no, no and uh, she became dual citizenship over there, my oldest daughter. No kidding. And, 
And then I have, uh, that's Jennifer, and then I have uh, the son, John Hartsock, uh-huh. which he is uh, one of the main engineers out at AirVac. Yes, he is. So he's been working uh, at AirVac uh, right from high school. Yeah. And so he's come a long way, and, yeah. uh, you know, in getting his engineering degree. Right. Uh, Johnny's traveling all over the country anymore, yeah. all over the world, world in some world. cases. Yeah, and that's what I uh, had some of that experience, too. I got to be able to dry, uh, travel to Taiwan, J- wow. Japan, and um, Korea when I was with Airbag as well. Nice. So that was uh, interesting as well, and Canada, of course. Some but, worldly uh, experience there. Yeah. And but then uh, getting back to my family, yeah. then I have a, I, I lost my daughter Kristen, uh, but she was uh, a nurse, and then. Uh, um, Jamie, uh, she lives here and yeah. she's uh, due to have my third grandchild and she's graduating <laughs> this year from IUK Excellent. And, uh, as a mother. And then I have a son, a youngest son is Marcus and yeah. he's graduating at Indiana State where I went to school. Is he graduating years. already? Yes, he oh is. Oh my gosh. And he is studying criminal justice Great. and uh, construction management. Okay. So right now he's doing an intern with the uh, Terre Haute Police Department. Okay, good for him. I'm yeah. sure he's seeing a lot down there in Terre Haute. Yeah. That's fantastic, Mark. Well, uh, you're throwing your hat back into the ring. We do have a Republican primary this year. We yes. had one uh, a few years ago. Uh, that was uh, there were three involved yes. in that primary, mm-hmm. and now it uh, I believe it's just the two of you. It's just two of us. Um, currently, Mayor Denton and uh, former Mayor Smiley. That is uh, is that the seventh of May? Is that election day this year? That is the seventh of May, okay. and early voting starts April twenty second. Okay, so we're right around the corner for early voting, getting ready to happen there. And if you're not registered, you can go to the clerk's office here in Fulton County at the courthouse, and uh, they can take care of that. There's some online functionings you can do as well. I'm not quite familiar with those, so I always recommend you check with the local folks up at the clerk's office if you're not registered or might not know your polling place. Um, let's it needs talk. to be done before Monday. Before Monday, Monday night. Okay, Monday night so is the last of registration. Registration. So right. by the time you see this, it may be too late. So hopefully you got out there to do that. But um, now we enjoy these conversations, Mark. Um, we bring folks in just to converse with them, so that the folks can identify with them. A lot of information um, coming across from a lot of folks, and we appreciate that. I know I do get the texts and emails. Folks mm-hmm. appreciate seeing us in this setting. Um, you know, what else can we talk about as far as why folks might want to pull the lever for Mark Smiley this this uh, spring? Well, I'd like to uh, do the same thing I did before. Okay. And, you know, you work eight years of your life doing a project, mm-hmm. which is the mayor of Rochester. And it was a business. You've got to treat it as a business. And to do that, uh, I enjoy doing the job. Okay. Um, I like people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, I'm a hard worker. You know, we all kid around, but mm-hmm. overall, I wouldn't be where I'm sitting here if I wasn't a hard worker. Right. And be working for myself is uh, one way to put it back to the city. Mm-hmm. You you can use your experience and you you can uh, minimize the cost and you know bring in more to the city and gain more by. Mm-hmm. We only have so much uh, differences. You only have so much money to work with yeah. the city, and your sole proprietorship or business, you know, you can make more money and you can make more profits. Sure. But you're you're limited to what you can get with the city. So mm-hmm. you have to maximize with what you got yeah. with to work with. And by doing that, it's a challenge. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing when people said, well, why, why did you ever, were you in politics? I never was in politics until I ran for mayor the oh, first no time. Kidding. Okay. And so that was the first step to being in politics. And I, I really enjoy doing it. Mm-hmm. But it's not just being in politics. you got to work for the people, you mm-hmm. know. I mean, it's not, you got to cut out the favoritism. you mm-hmm. got to use what's best judgment to do that. Mm-hmm. And by doing all this, that I just think that we can go in the right direction here and we can get, uh, more bang for our buck this okay. is you know and you know i miss it actually yeah um once you're a mayor you're always a mayor yeah but uh do you get to keep the title like a president I, people I, call, yeah, mayor they still still call me still mayor you know and you know so uh, it's, uh it doesn't go away right. and they still call my wife first lady some people do <laughs> whether she likes that or not i still, still call my high school coaches coach yeah, when i pass exactly. them by so you know, it's a term it, of endearment to a yeah. certain degree once you're a coach, you're always a coach. Yeah. But I, I do think that uh, the biggest thing, you know, I mean, it, it is a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. You know, you uh, put a lot of burden on your family, yeah. but it's a good burden, you know. And 
the biggest thing is I do enjoy people and I do like the challenge of it. And it's also, uh, you know, you're doing something just like building a house. You sit back and you look at it and you say, well, I built this, you know, certain sense of pride, even a concrete project. Look what I did here. And the same thing with the city. I mean, it's, you know, you see the projects and you see what you uh, have done. Mm -hmm. You might not see a lot when you're lining a sewer pipe in the Mantle Heights area to make it flow better. Right. There's nothing but, glamorous about that, but no, it's much needed, right? Exactly. And we did a lot of that mm-hmm. with uh, in sit reform when I was the mayor. It was pretty uh, high technology the way they do that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, back when I used to go with shows with AirVac, they would be at the same shows like in Toronto or Canada. So they've been around a long time. <laughs> yeah. And so they, uh, you, you get the hands-on experience sure. of knowing what goes on. So I guess in one way to draw it up that, uh, you know, a vote for me is going to be a vote for the new uh, Fulton County again, yeah. you know, and we can go in the right direction as far as, uh, you know, getting more for less. And yeah. quality of life is a big thing, too. Yeah. We want to make sure we have the quality of life, you know. And, you know, one thing about it, you know, it'd be nice to uh, start focusing on uh, trying to get a YMCA or something here. Again, okay. You know. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of grants out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. granted, it's uh, no pun intended, but it's yeah. it's money that uh, somebody gets. Yeah. And it's just like when I was the mayor, we got the Council of Aging Garage. Mm-hmm. And we had to pull that together with uh, myself and Mindy, Mindy Martinowitz, who was the county uh, council, not the county council, but it's the uh, transpo uh-huh. lady yep. at that time. Yep. She would asked me, uh, you know, how to do it. So we got to hold the day. I said, get a hold of Dave Carr, and we'll get an estimate. And we started from there, and then yeah. we ended up getting a grant for a million dollars. Wow. But we had to coordinate the county commissioners mm-hmm. to agree to get that money because the county commissioners and the county council had the transpo. Mm. We just were the landlords because we owned the building. Mm-hmm. So we had to get the county commissioners and the county councils. all council work together in order to make that happen, Yeah. And that was kind of like pulling teeth for a while, but it was like, you know, if we don't get this million dollars, you know, somebody else will take it, you know? So it all worked out. We've got, you know, it's a very beautiful facility. And then with my experience in construction, they first brought it out. It was just going to be a commercial dome, Mm. like a Mm -hmm. Quonset hut. Uh I said, we can't have that in a, you know, downtown city, you know? And uh, so working with the engineers and architects, I said, just build it like a pole bar, Uh you know? And so you got a number of bays in there and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it keeps them covered in the right. winter time. And, uh, I mean, what a valuable asset. Talk about one of the assets of Fulton County. We need to get over and talk to the folks at Transpo for a uh, city this size. Of course, we're not going to have, um, the taxi services. I right. know that they've right. been tried over mm-hmm. the years. In fact, a relative Jack Sager was the first taxi driver in Fulton County. Right? And, um, I've seen that in one of Shirley Willard's books, yeah. but, you know, uh, even Uber. Yeah, you may have a couple of people who want to be Uber drivers right. here, but it's not like Chicago where yeah. you hit the button and two minutes away is your driver. It's, yeah. So Transpo fills in just a tremendous role here and having something like the garage to keep them mm-hmm. covered and, and especially in the wintertime or the rain time, that's fantastic. Right. So, but it and, does take a lot of work. And that's where I was going with working together with the mm-hmm. county commissioners and the county council. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, Mindy Martinowitz, she uh, got her feet wet on that project sure. because, you know, I mean, some people want it, some people don't. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, the, again, going back to the money situation, you don't have the money to work with, so you somewhere, you know, you've got to, you know, shuffle, yeah. juggle yeah. and uh, in order to do things. Yeah. And you got to prioritize what uh, is best. Right. And it's just like your projects, you know, all the projects. There's a lot of projects in Rochester, Indiana that need to be fixed. Right. We started doing the Sidewalk ADA, the mm-hmm. uh, American Disability Act, you know, and we started doing that. But you can only do so much at a time. Right. And that's where if you cut the cost out through natural attrition and mm-hmm. don't rehire people, you can put some more money into the infrastructure. Right, right. Well, it's all about being a good steward of, of your tax dollars and um, of your interests. Of course, you have to make the tough call sometimes right. on um, you know what's going to benefit the most people for the longest amount of time. Exactly. And um, those are some tough calls. And you know every decision is going to leave somebody who didn't get what they wanted. We right. know that. But um, I appreciate you being so candid today about your experience and about where you want to take Rochester. Again, this is uh, Mayor Mark Smiley. He is uh, running again for mayor of Rochester in the Republican primary this coming May. I encourage everybody to get out and vote in the primaries. Um, Anything else you'd like to add today? Just like to uh, be your mayor again, and uh, I appreciate your vote, and we uh, won't let you down. Okay, very good. Mark Smiley, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching here on RTC TV 4. 
Check out all of our political interviews on our website, rtc4.com, or right here on the local channels. Thanks again. Thank you.